Kyokyo Aveco plant. It's located in Mutai, Jinja. It's seated on 100 acres of land. And this is where we plan to have a production um, of 5,000 vehicles per year. Hey, yeah. Yes. Um, this is predominantly a bus manufacturing plant. So on this facility, we'll have the main production facility, which is over there. Okay. This will have the body shop. Um, basically that produces the body of the bus, the bus frame, and it has a lot of welding. Then we'll have a trim, which will have the final trim of the bus, where you put in the seats, and it's supposed to provide employment for over uh, 3,000 people. Welcome to the YouTube channel. My name is Wadamaya, your one and only African content creator on a journey to celebrate African excellence. Before clicking on this video, were you aware that there is an electric vehicle manufacturing plant in Uganda? If you are not aware, don't stress yourself. That's why you have the annoying village boy on a journey to bring the hidden games in Africa back to life. This is why you need to like this video and help this channel get 1.5 million subscribers by the end of this year. You know what? If you are new to the channel, subscribe before I continue. Can you all believe that these electric buses on these roads are made in Uganda by Ugandan engineers? So, is this a manufacturing plant or an assembly plant? It is a manufacturing plant. Uh, basically, we'll have raw materials come in. Okay. We'll weld them together. We'll have the, some parts and components come. Uh, that is motors, engines, and then we'll put them onto the bus. Okay. So, we start when there's basically material. And these are all done by Ugandan engineers? Yes, this is all done by Ugandan engineers. Um, these engineers are, have been developed by the country. I am so proud of Ugandans and this is why I keep on telling Africans that it's about time we solve Africa's problem with African solution. And that is the main aim of Chira Motors. Chira Motors aim is to promote sustainable mass mobility solution for Africa. What really shocked me the most is where the idea came from. Um, the bus manufacturing facility is, um, it originates from Makare. Okay, these are my, these are my children. Oh, wow. Okay. Because uh, I started with them from my classroom. Engineering, mathematics, I'm told you're an engineer, right? Yeah, I know so, I taught engineering mathematics to all of them. Okay. So that's really where the whole thing started from, all right? Okay. As a, an extracurricular activity. We have produced uh, four buses so far that are electric and two buses that are diesel. Mm. These are 12 meter buses. So this plant specifically will be producing those buses. That's where actually we were with Paul. You know. He was my student, then a, a tall young fellow at that time. Up the time when, uh, uh, this was now 2007, to five, six, seven, I had briefly gone to start a new university up in the north. Mm. So when I came back and joined him, I said, look, let's finish the assignment I had left. And that's where we were actually involved. Then along the way, some idea came. Where one of my former students who was a PhD student went to MIT mm -hmm. yeah, and found some young people who were working on, uh, uh, actually their issue was, given that the U.S. has been to the space and all that with all those technologies, what can we use to address our earthly you know, uh, transport problems. So, so they were working on uh, a scheme, what was it called, uh, Vehicle Design Summit, mm. okay, from there. And they asked if we could participate. I think that's where it started. You know. And they said, oh yeah, we can. So, so the engagement with the 
uh, with MIT, and the MIT was coordinating consortium of 31 universities, some in Canada, California, I think some in Europe, and we were the only ones from Africa. So the first thing we did was actually to design, uh, when you go on the internet, mm. you find a vehicle, uh, Vision 200. That was the very first vehicle we designed and built. Because uh, each team was working on a component of that vehicle. Eventually, um, we converged in uh, Turin, Torino, oh. Italy. That was not 2008, from about May up to August. Now to build the actual car out of the components which the different teams had uh, designed. Mm. And by August, I mean, we'll come with that vehicle, which you'll not see. And uh, the team I went with, and none of them, I'm sorry, none of them is here. Oh. That team I went with, they did such a wonderful work. And particularly in the area of welding, okay. our boy came to the top. Wow. I don't have him here now. So he came back, but the idea was that each team would raise money to transport that vehicle Vision 200 to his or her country so that their people can. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't transport. I didn't have the money. <laughs> didn't have the money. But I came here and, and announced to the whole country that we have built a vehicle. We now have the capacity. We can design and build and so forth. And. Uh, these uh, press people, I think, made some noise a bit about it, but they didn't see any vehicle. So we went in, actually designing this and now uh, showing it to people how we're going to build this using PowerPoint. <laughs> All over. Uh, that was early 2009. November, there was a job vacancy in the university. Our vice chancellor and the deputy vice chancellors were flushed out because we were told they didn't do a good piece of work. So the council now said, instead of recruiting to replace this immediately, we need to change the way we're recruiting, identifying these people. So for the next six months, we're going to invite senior members of the university to apply to fill these positions on an acting basis. And uh, so I pushed through, became the deputy vice chancellor of finance and the administration, although I'm known in the arts and whatnot. You know. And they were supposed to act for six months. After six months, they didn't want to replace us. So I ended up working for four years. Wow. <laughs> deputy vice chancellor. Now, that is the opportunity, I think, which now crystallized this. Because as soon as I got in the office, someone, the president, got to know that I was engaged in all kinds of funny, funny things in the university. I don't know who reported to him. So he sends a soldier to my office. This guy comes into the office, said, I'm left in the sun. So, are you Professor Sun? So, he said, yes. So what's the issue? He said, no, I'm coming from the president. Mm -hmm. The president has heard that you are doing interesting things here. And he would like to come and see those things himself, okay, in person. Mm. But in addition to that, he wants to go to the Department of History. He wants to go to the Department of you know, Political Science. Okay. Those are the only th units. So it won't be a big occasion. Said, okay, so I'm so and so. And uh, what do you, does he exactly want to see? They say, whatever you are doing. So that's how we now went in. I think December 11th, no, 12th. That same year, 2009, is now when he comes, so he said, now, me, please, you show me everything you are doing here. So I took him through, and eventually we now organized that day and went to the university, to the college, showed him what we were doing, and then asked, now, what do you want, you know, to move these things forward? all the support, in spite of our limited resources. And 
and that's exactly what he did. I think 28th. I, I was in my village 500 kilometers from here. I had to dash down to write those things with Paul and the team and they presented. I think cabinet was really impressed with what we were doing. Notwithstanding that they had not been providing us funding for research and that. So I think that really was the, maybe the beginning of the possibility of funding what we were doing. And that's how Chira Motors became a state-owned enterprise. But unfortunately, when that money was not released, it went through the Ministry of Education. Mm. Yeah. And they started splitting. <laughs> At the end of the day, the college ended up, I think, for $4,500. Million. Okay. The other, uh, no, I think they gave us 10. The other 400 went to uh, food science. And then another one million went to vet department. And so that's how we started. Now, when did you go to the college? My college gave me only $500,000 okay, for this exercise which attracted the president. Okay. These are our, our administrators, you know. So with those $500, we finished design, we crafted, and we built the very, the very first vehicle. That lime green car, we built it from the college. We created a shed in the basement of that. And when I brought the chancellor to sit down and see what I was doing, he thought I was just a joker. You know? He came and he was very reluctant to go and see what I was doing with my people. But eventually we built, and for the president, that was about two years later. But for the president, he was excited. When I told him that there's something we want you to see, I think 24th November 2011, came. And uh, when he saw this, he said, can it move? He was not engaging. <laughs> can, can it move? <laughs> because I arranged Paul to handle it. All. <laughs> I said, yes. And unfortunately, you see, we had put it on a uh, a podium, a pedestal, a raised floor for people to see. But for him, when we got there, he said, <laughs> we go. So he entered the vehicle, Paul, <laughs> you should have seen the security running <laughs> after the car. Yeah, <laughs> that we shall take the president with us. <laughs> full electric car. Full electric car. Yeah, full electric car. Gabisa. So, he commissioned it, and during the speech, he said what he's seeing is an African Renaissance, a rebirth. Okay. And so, as far as he is concerned, he's going to do everything to support what we are doing. Okay. Whatever money, whatever. So, I picked on that, and then started chasing the support that I needed from him. And with the support from the government, this is the future of Chira Motors. Uh, so behind me, mm -hmm. we have uh, the main production facility. It's going to have the warehousing of all the parts, the raw materials when they come. Okay. It's going to have a body shop. We would have welding of the metal, pen, metal panels. Okay. And we'll have metal pipes, so the frame will be made in this workshop. Where, where are the materials sourced from? The materials are sourced from companies within Uganda okay. that do steel and we'll also have uh, automotive steel being delivered here. This automotive steel is basically used for buses to prevent them from having, from having accidents and to also have them uh, be certified, properly okay. certified. Okay. So uh, this particular building would have solar panels on the roof that will provide power to this facility, auxiliary power. Okay. And um, as you can see over there, that's the, f that's the size of the bus compared oh, to the, the bus. entire building. 
But yeah. uh, how many cars will be produced in a day? How many buses will be produced in a day? It is, uh, the capacity of this plant is 22 buses per day. Oh. So um, on a daily, we'll have 22 buses come off the line, but we'll prep more buses at the beginning of the line. Prof, you've seen the practical thing that you've done. Mm -hmm. Don't you think our education system is rotten? Give us, oh, it's, it's rotten. It's, it's rotten. So, Prof, you know it. It's rotten. So, why are we still consuming uh, that? I tried, I was briefly a minister of state for higher education science. You know? I tried to overhaul it. Okay? This was 2015, 2016. Okay? You, can, you can't believe, he knows. Fags fighting that cause that I was pushing would have had a slightly different higher education system. In other words, me as a professor, there's no point in me going to make notes out of published work and so forth. Okay? Why can't I start actually with these fellows right from the first year? Okay? Of course, ideally, the primary, the secondary should also be addressed. But I think it was quicker to start at the top and then go, go gradually downwards. So that by the time these kids come to the top next time, they have already been duly prepared to fit an environment. But that effort was sabotaged up to now. They are still forming groups. Oh, you go in this report, this committee, nothing. Because my belief, even my, you know, um, a primary school, let's say the fourth, sixth year of schooling, we should have started interesting these kids with hands on things, actually, you know, and not wait until he has graduated, then he go and look for jobs for the food, 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 you know. This whole system has got to change. It has got to change, you know. So the system of our education, where we're just, I don't know which war was fought between France and I don't know. Well, we, we even <laughs> have to name the yes. a part of a grasshopper, <laughs> which I think it has nothing to do with me. <laughs> So this is it. We should be in the realities on the ground. That, that's where we should go. You, you, you don't think we need an African solution for African problems? I don't know whether you call them African solutions for African problems. Yes, African problems. But my issue is what we should be doing is to groom the young minds to actually do things. You know? I think that happens in Europe, that happens in America, you know. But ours, because of, I think, partly colonization effects and so forth, we must first of all learn things to support the system. Mm -hmm. I think, colonizing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> colonizing. And then thereafter you can see if you can uh, <laughs> do other things. You know. And you can see why I want to form, you know, reform the education sector. Mm -hmm. Because this business of committing yourself, yes, yes, just reproducing what the professor here says, can't take you anywhere.